Okay, now part C. Let's chalk this and on it again down to read the question carefully. Part C says, sketch the curve defined by the modulus of z minus 2 equals 2. We were pretty fine with this. Um, I did find it mildly disappointing. There were so many people who found a circle really hard to draw, but some of you, I just barely gave it to you because um, you know it was it was circular-like and I saw scale and that kind of thing. But if there was not consistent scale on your circle, well, it doesn't look like a circle. I can't pay that, right? But then on the same Nigan diagram, um, there were three things being looked for when you've got a three mark question. Number one, there's a region. Sketch the region defined by these inequalities. Now, um, the key thing that uh, pretty much everyone missed was this word in here. It says or. So or means the union between two sections. If you think back, um, you know, if you've got a number um, and I say, you know, x is less than negative 3 or x is greater than 2, um, if you satisfy either one of these inequalities, that's fine. So I could put this on the number line like so. Let's put 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So if I call this to a negative 3, which part of this do I shade? It's going to be this and to the left, this and to the right. So in other words, you include both of them, right? Therefore, you've got uh, this inequality here, which is inside the circle, and then you've got this inequality here, which is the entire plane that has an argument between pi on 4 and pi as measured from this point here, the reference point being 2. And so that's why, um, you know, several of you got the uh, got this boundary correct, but then you said, well, I'm just going to include this part here um, because you forgot that this part was also included. So that region was what I was looking for. But then secondly, um, the question itself, it states uh, labeling all boundary points and equations. And there was barely anyone who did either of those things. Um, this, you know, you've, you've sort of done this circle here. I put the Cartesian equations because I think that's clearer. But even if you put the complex equations, you know, the absolute value of uh, or the modulus of z minus 2 equals 2. That was kind of borderline okay because I didn't state that you needed the uh, Cartesian equation. Um, however, it was a big no-no if you went to that boundary and you labeled that with an inequality. Because an inequality is not, a re is not a boundary, it's a region. It's the thing that you shaded. But this question clearly states, give me the boundary points and boundary equations. So that's why you really uh, desperately needed to have an equal sign there. Um, and also, I don't know if there was anyone who labeled this key boundary point over here. A lot of people put the 4 in, you put the 0, the origin in, that was great. Um, but this is clearly a junction where things changed. Uh, and so you can see down here, this is me working out the solution um, to find that point of intersection. So when the question says, find the boundary points, maybe spend some time finding the boundary points. Okay, That was part C. And then the final part, part D. All right, this is quite a tough one. That's why it was the last question on the paper. Consider the complex number z equals cos theta plus i sine theta. Now, I'm going to highlight that because there is immediately, later on in the question, something which refers to that. Cos theta plus i sine theta. This is not just any complex number. This is a specific family of complex numbers because when we write complex numbers in polar form, we would normally write them with an r at the front, right? And this indicates the modulus. Now, because you don't have an r stated here, that means r, that's implied that r is equal to 1. So therefore, you have these complex numbers z, they sit on the unit circle, which you can see just down here in part 2, uh, it says you're going to need to use that fact that this lies on the unit circle um, to be able to prove these results. So therefore, let's now dive into um, our result, okay? Um, part 1 says, using DeMarvis theorem, show that z over n plus 1 over z over n, z to the n is purely real for any integer value because um, DeMarvis theorem only applies for integers. So there's a couple of ways to go about this. Um, you could use negative indices, which was fine because uh, DeMarvis theorem holds for negative indices. So here is me. Oops, it is he. Here's me quoting um, DeMarvis' theorem just for z to the n, and then here's me quoting DeMarvis' theorem for um, z to the negative n. So you can see that negative n there happening twice. Um, and then what I can say is, okay, well, let's look at this carefully, right? Cos of negative n theta, that's the same as cos n theta, and crucially, I gave a reason for it. That's because cos x is an even function. Um, and I make the same argument here that you've got this i sine minus n theta, which is the same as minus sine n theta, but not because I say so, it's because sine x is an odd function. Now again, coming back to the question, this is um, two marks and it says, show that. 
show that. We're not interested in the answer so much as we're interested in the reasons why the answer is true. And so you've really got to provide um, these reasons in here and a lot of people miss that. So you can see once you've set that all up, um, you get this cancellation happening, right? So there's the cos n theta, um, and it's gonna collect like terms with the other cos n theta. Um, and here's the minus sine n theta, which is going to cancel with this positive i sine n theta. So um, you ended up at this result down here, which you definitely needed for part two. Speaking of part two, it says um, the polynomial p to the z, uh, p of z rather, equals, and then they give you this, uh, this long, awkward thing in here. It has four complex roots which all lie on the unit circle. Pause. When you've got a polynomial and it has complex roots, that uh, it has four complex roots, that means we're saying when is this equation equal to zero? That's how you find roots, right? So that's why, oh, um, I've skipped over something, I'll come back to this in a second. That's why you can see my first line here is equal to this whole polynomial and I've let it equal to zero, okay? So then what I've done is I've noticed there's a symmetry to the uh, coefficients of this and it means that I can use this result um, from part one um, which is to say when you've got z to the n plus z to the negative n these combine and just give you this real result so um, you can see here if I can manufacture this by dividing through by z squared you get a z squared here and a z to the negative two there so you can see I've combined uh, these two here I've underlined them and it gives you um, this term out the front. You can do the same with the z and the z to the negative one, um, or should I say the three z and the three z to the negative one. Um, and then, essentially, from this line here, I go into the next line by using part one. Um, there's that two cos n theta, except here n's two, and here n is one. Once you've expanded this all out, you get um, this result. Not expand out, I should say, you should divide by two, because all these are even. Two, two, 16 divided by two gives you eight. Okay, now I got up ahead of myself. There was another way to prove uh, part one. You didn't have to do it this way. Um, you could have just used like uh, z to the power of n plus one over z to the power of n and not done the negative indices, even though they were a bit quicker. So you can see here, this is one over z to the n. Uh, to deal with that, of course, you've got to realize the denominator, which is why I've named this method that. Um, you can see um, up on the top here, you've got that complex conjugate. On the denominator, you're getting cos squared plus sine squared, so you're using the Pythagorean identity, that's delightful. So you get this result, it's over one. Um, you get essentially the same thing that I got on this line, except I've got it all divided by one. So there's my cos n theta there, which collects with this term, and then my si i sine n thetas, they are going to cancel, so you end up on the same thing. Okay, we saw part two, um, and then here comes the final part. It says, hence or otherwise, show that the solutions of P of Z equals zero are five plus minus 12i on 13, negative one plus minus root three i on two. All right, how do we do that? When you have a look at my solution here, you can see what I've done from um, the immediately previous line in part two to the first line of part three is I've just used the double angle formula for cosine, right? I've just expanded here. So you can see that when I've done that, um, you get this term here expanding out into this. Um, and then once you've collected like terms, you can see that minus 13 and that eight, that gives you this minus five. Um, you then have a quadratic in cos, uh, quadratic in cos theta, I should say, which you can solve just like any other quadratic. So you can see, I've, I've, I've looked at this, I've got 26 and um, negative five, so then negative 130. Um, that product there, what's the pair of numbers that works for that? Um, it's 13 and negative 10. So therefore you can see me breaking apart, doing this pairwise factorization, leads you here, gives you these two solutions. Now you already knew that those were gonna be the solutions because the question itself told you what the parts were, but then you need to do a little bit of work to show where the uh, sign comes from, right? So better answer put their, um, their cos diagrams onto an argand diagram. So you can see here, my triangles are going off to the left here, the left of the imaginary axis, because cos theta equals negative a half. That's the direction it's going in around the unit circle. So therefore, um, you can work out what your plus uh, or minus of um, the sine theta is, because you've got conjugate solutions here, and then uh, plus or minus of the sine solutions here, plus or minus root three on two. And that gives you the answer that was required. So this was a challenging test. It really um, distinguished between students who understood their concepts, understood them well, and also, as you've seen all the way through this topic, you know, um, if you think back to the first time, for instance, we introduced to you 
complex numbers in exponential form, rectangular form, and polar form. And we said to you, hey, we're showing you all these different forms because different forms are suited to different types of problems. And that's kind of a metaphor for this entire topic and indeed all of maths. There are many different methods and choosing the most effective one makes everything kind of line up um, and your solutions come out quickly rather than for a long time. So if you felt like you ran out of time, what I would encourage you to do is have a look at the methods that you chose, compare them to these written solutions and think about where were the places that cost you time because the method that you chose wasn't the best one or the wasn't the most efficient one. So I hope you learned something out of this paper.